We're here with uh, Matteo, and if you could introduce yourself, please. Uh, uh, I'm Nora. I'm the business development manager here at the Matteo Inc. office. Okay. And, and I'm Stefan. I'm responsible for the technical side here at the U.S. office. Fantastic. So tell me a little bit about what your company does. Uh, our company is an augmented reality provider. Uh, augmented reality is technology where you can combine uh, real time as we know it, as we see it at the whole time, with virtual digital information. Okay. And uh, you have some examples here. It looks like you're going to show. Yes, just uploading. Okay, so one of the, the applications that we have also for end consumer domain is that we're using books as for, for kids. Instead of just reading, also seeing, hearing, um, stuff by the computer. I don't know if you can see that. I can. But I can, I, can you put the sound up The sound. You have to go on top. I to see it very good. So these also provide uh, so sound? sound? Yes. Sound is up at the moment, so I don't Now you showed this recently at a book show and it was at the Frankfurt Book Show last year in October. So um, there was a large screen uh, where a girl was standing with the book in front of her and just showing a couple of pages. Oh very cool. As you imagine here, she's having a, a, a trade show booth and just someone playing around with it. Um, showing the book to the camera and people are thinking, why are you showing a book to the camera? Right. And then as soon as they say, oh, where are the animations coming from? And as you see, there is no specific marker whatsoever right. uh, put on the book. It loads fairly yeah. fast. Basically, uh, a new version of yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, this one here. Yeah, all, all new kind of pop-up book now. Exactly. exactly. Very cool. And so you were saying that you have uh, some applications coming out for mobile as well. Uh, we have um, the software itself running on uh, Symbian, Windows Mobile, and the iPhone. On the iPhone, we already have a couple of um, apps in the App Store. Uh, one is called Virtual Santa, the other one is iLiving. Um, do we have iLiving running? Yeah. What, what, what do they allow you to do? Uh? Uh, with Virtual Santa, there was as a, a proof of concept that we have uh, augmented reality running on an iPhone um, where you can take a picture of a marker, so this was marker based. Um, people go into the app, take a picture within the app of the marker, and they get a virtual Santa in that picture, waving, singing his Christmas song. Um, so that was more as a fun Christmas app. Gotcha. Uh, the other app we have is called iLiving, which is um, as a furniture planner, but then on the iPhone. Okay. So what people do is they take a picture also here within the app, and instead of having any... Um, Show it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, I take a picture of the table here. All right. I use the picture. Now I have the possibility to add uh, any kind of 3D object in it example here bench and I have the possibility to move this around so it's basically like your furniture planner uh, in your hand wow very cool very neat um, as what you see with with the iPhone is currently all picture based mm -hmm. as due to software restrictions um, from Apple, yeah. unfortunately. Um, we do have markers. 
So I know with the uh, new release of Apple's SDK, they're going to allow applications to actually tap into the video of that? And not uh, in the 3.0. Oh, no? Or at least what we saw in the API of it, there's no camera access yet. Really? Okay, okay, okay. So we're still really awaiting till <laughs> that comes out because that's, of course, the killer right. application as what we have with other two platforms. They do allow mm. camera access. And also with... Um, as of course the App Store is a, is a big advantage as for the distribution, but also uh, Symbian will have the Ovi, or at least Nokia marketplace for Windows Mobile, so we also hope there that it will allow a big step to push that also to, to the end consumers, that everybody can have easy access to it, right. depend, not depending on the platform that you're on. Are y'all looking any at, at Google Android or? Uh, we are currently yes. We are uh, creating a prototype uh, for the Android platform as well. Um, so this is. Okay, okay. Hold this for you. Um, I have to go a bit back of it. Um, so this is on the same oh, wow. platform where you can see. Um, I feel a bit down yeah, because of maybe the you know the best angle there. This is with the little real camera, live camera feed. I can put it down here. That way, you can move around. Nice. And this is, of course, instead of taking pictures. Right. So how um, how does one create content for this? So you have an SDK or uh, we have an or? SDK for um, for the creating of the technology. Yes, um, the content itself uh, what we use is the VRML ninety seven. Um. Yeah, and basically our, our renderer uh, is able to load uh, animations and uh, models. Okay. So uh, we're ready to go there. Excellent. And, and um, so, so are you looking at supporting the, the newer standard X3D anytime soon? or? Uh? Well, actually, our rendering <laughs> engine uh, already supports X3D. Okay, fantastic. And uh, also the subset of Colada. Okay. Yeah, I think I saw this on YouTube, actually, the way that the guys created it. Y'all can put that up there. is in German so people needed to trick a bit to for for Americans who Google to, Translate that's exactly. what that's for yeah, so. uh, that's what a lot that, that they did and um, just to get it downloaded etc et up and running but then a lot of cool blog entries where people just holding the ad etc as, as they were testing it came out and there were so many blog entries and, and YouTube views on it that um, it was a very successful campaign for me so y'all don't necessarily use marker-based tracking. Yeah. We have basically a, a platform for augmented reality. It's called the Unify SDK. And uh, the system allows you to configure the tracking system based on XML files. So you basically uh, can have an XML file where you define several markers. It can be like span up one uh, bigger coordinate system. Or you can have uh, another configuration for uh, a markerless um, uh, for a markerless tracker, which basically just relies on a JPEG image and searches for uh, features within this image. Yeah, it's kind of odd because it's it's really neat because one of the biggest problems I hear from people are about you know like the markers is you know, just yeah yeah there are a lot of uh, flash applications as well from all probably seen them they are all using markers at the moment. And right. Of course, it's as soon as you can use something as more creative and uh, or what already exists as with the book, that's where you have a big advantage. Right. Well, thank you for your time. Of You're course. welcome.